Martin says, I'm getting to that point of allowing myself to be angry. I'm so scared of my anger for some reason. And it's easier to be mad at myself. I really hate that. That's really insightful. That's really insightful. And I think probably a lot of people feel that way. Because it can be, it's scary. It's, it can be really scary to start to feel that anger. Because it can, you know, I think for a lot of people, it's that feeling of feeling out of control, especially if that anger is a slippery slope into outright rage. And it's sort of like, if I open up that, that box, that door, I don't know if I can shut it again. And if I unleash all of this fury that I've built up, I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm not sure what I even really want to have happen. Because it might mean that I just, I freak out and I say a bunch of stuff and it ends a bunch of friendships or family, you know, family relationships or, or what have you. I don't want to say things I can't unsay. And it's, it's a tough line to walk. It really, really is. So I, f I feel for you. It's a tough place to be in. So... And maybe trying to gradually explore that anger as it surfaces and, you know, instead of kind of letting all the horses out of the barn all at one time, being, okay, like, what can I, what can I handle? And then pulling it back a little bit. And then what can I handle? And then pulling it back a little bit until you get more and more comfortable that you can control your anger instead of having it instead of like, you know, being dragged by a pack of wild horses, right? So, and this, this is a point that was discussed again in that complex PTSD book, but, and I I keep mentioning this because I think it's just so profound and so helpful, is that concept of emotional flashbacks. So as you're going through life, kind of what have you, and you find yourself being triggered by something, the the gift in that is whenever we're triggered, it's saying it's a sign of pain, right? That's a sign of hey, this is like hey, hey, over here, me, me, uh, unresolved, unresolved issues. <laughs> like, uh, here, here I am. I'm an unresolved issue. Uh, can you please? Uh, I, I need to be worked on. So once we resolve that issue, then that trigger it goes away. It's resolved. And that's really powerful stuff, but it can take a little while to get, to, you know, to get to that place. So it, and it's, and it's, it can be really, really challenging depending on how intense the trigger is, how intense the pain is that's behind that trigger. So as you're feeling it, and so, you know, again, I've mentioned this, like for me, what I've, what I've realized, and I probably, every, every person's different, but I'm just going to tell you what I've noticed in me in case it is similar for you, but for me, I've noticed when I get triggered, two of the things that I notice um, that I do is I, I, and I can feel it, actually three things. I have a really hard time being quiet. I get really angry and I can feel myself saying things I, that I'm like, Dana, just stop talking. <laughs> and I just get so angry and it's just like, it's just stuff's coming out of my mouth and even during that, I can feel like I just need, you need to, you just need to stop talking. Like you need to kind of rein it in because you're saying a bunch of stuff you can't unsay. Uh, or st and not maybe even not necessarily that to that extreme, but it's the realization of, oh my gosh, I don't want, I don't want to be this person that has such uh, anger and venom because that's how it feels like venom inside of me that it that it's I'm just dumping this whenever I'm getting triggered like that's that's not okay with me so that's a sign for me if I'm feeling venomous and like on the attack uh, if I'm cussing because I don't normally cuss uh, like seriously like I'll, I'll cuss as a joke and you know among friends or whatever, but it's, again, it's like lighthearted cussing. I don't normally cuss out of anger. So if I'm cussing out of anger, then that's a sign that I'm really being tr triggered. Um, and then the third one is that I'm, it, I have a, I can feel it. It's a disproportionate response to what's, or reaction, I should say, a disproportionate reaction to what's going on in the moment. So, and it could be something 
um, like, I don't know. I have ongoing issues with with some coworkers that are that are well intended. Like nothing they're even doing is intended to be hurtful, but it's it's my perception of their actions. It's totally triggering for me, and it just brings. It just I go from zero to ten, and it's awful. So trying to stay aware, trying to stay present when that when those triggers do surface, when those um, those signs do surface and being like, okay, like I am not being in the mo I'm not in the moment right now. Like I'm being triggered. This is a sign that there's this unresolved issue that I need to examine and just try, try to stay present with my feelings and to try to get more curious about them than judgmental, I guess. And to try to just rein it in and realize, Dana, that none of this is real. Like this is not even going on. This is all your perception of stuff. It's just residual stuff that, that kind of helps. So I, so I would encourage you to try to do the same. So as this stuff is surfacing to examine it and be like, okay, what's really going on here? Uh, I don't know. It can be very powerful. Yeah. No more was saying I've never seen you really get angry, but I have seen pain in your face when hearing certain stories of abuse or thoughts of suicide. Yeah, and you know, they say uh, for a lot of people, like anger is the bodyguard of pain. And I think that's very true. And how, and how people, I think socially and culturally and probably even gender specifically process anger is very different. I mean, I noticed this too when I was working with teenagers. By and large, with the kids I was working with, boys again, this is not like a hard and fast rule, but like boys, if they experienced anger, tended to lash outwards. They were the ones, they were joining gangs. They were being destructive. They were kind of running amok. They were really, you know, violent, um, kind of out of control. Girls, when they tend to experience, again, like by and large, not a hard and fast thing. When a lot of women or girls tend to experience anger, it's turned inwards. And generally it comes across as depression. It comes across as feeling suicidal. It's, and it's more self harm kind of stuff. So it's cutting, it's, um, you know, it's self like just self harm kind of stuff. Lots of love to you guys. You are not alone. You are not crazy and you really can move forward and heal from this.